you very much. Uh, we drove down for information. <laughs> but there was nothing wrong with the road, so we got down here okay. Um, so, excuse me, um, we've got quite a lot of slides to get through. Um, oh, I'm going backwards. I'll just get myself onto the first one. Yep, there we go. Okay, yeah, so I've got quite a lot of information to share with you in 20 minutes, so please bear with me because it's going to be quite rushed through. But on the subject of austerity, um, I just wanted to share with you our experience about how we transformed the service to try and manage the budget pressures that we've got by looking at the assets that we've got and how best to use some of those. Um, so this is what I'm going to share with you. Um, so just a little bit of background about the Parks and Countryside Service what we call our enterprising approach. Um, so I'm just going to share with you what we've done, uh, a little bit about what we've got going on at the moment, and then what our future plans are in terms of investment and dealing with some of the budget situation. Um, and then, of course, we're going to wrap that all up and just give you some points to consider, because the Leeds team have got a workshop this afternoon for those of you that are joining, so they're happy to share our experiences in how we develop business cases, etc., and what our future plans are and the things you've got to consider. But I think there's an opportunity for us all who manage parks to actually do a little bit of this on, on varying scales. So this is Leeds. We're quite an integrated park service. Uh, we look after 4,000 hectares of land. Um, so about 1,500 hectares of formal parks, what you might recognise, a bit like Cannon Hall out here. Um, and then about 2,500 hectares of natural environments, so woodlands, natural grasslands, all sorts of other different habitats. Uh, but importantly, we've got seven major parks, lots of community parks, typical parks and countryside service. Um, we also got our own workshops, etc. So we're fully integrated on that and we manage our own business cases and our own commercial elements as well. Um, so we've got 550 full-time equivalent staff and quite a number of part-time staff as well um, that actually help us uh, deliver all this. So going back in the days of austerity, so laws that you can think back, so um, back in 2010-11, this was our budget effectively. So we had a gross expenditure of £28 million. Pounds. Uh, we had an income of £14 million. 21% of that was external. But I think importantly from a budget perspective, our net cost to the city was £14 million. Pounds. And over the life of the programme to this date now, this is where we currently stand. So it just gives you a flavour of, of what we've been able to achieve. So actually, our gross expenditure's gone up. So it's gone up to 36 million. So we've, actually, we've been able to invest in the services and protect frontline staffing numbers. Um, but the big change is our income has gone up to 28 million pounds. And we've done that through this enterprising approach that I'm going to share with you now. So our net cost to the authority is now just 8 million pounds. So we've actually saved the authority uh, well over 40% of the net cost of running the park service without any, to do any more cuts um, on there. So these are examples of work that we've already done. So I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about Tropical World at our, sort of one of our premier sites, Roundy Park. Um, a little bit about Lovington Wildlife World, the Arium, which is our new plant nursery, um, and uh, Golden Acre Park, which is probably a good example of a bit of a partnership where we've had, where we've had a, uh, somebody who had a link to the park. So this is Tropical World. This sits within Roundy Parks, a 300 hectare park um, in, in, built in an urban area of Leeds. Um, Tropical World was built in the 1980s. Um, and it had a very small cafe with limited retail. Most of the glass houses were set aside for like a butterfly house. Uh, and back in 2010, we did levy a small charge to get in there. Um, and we earn about 880, well, we earn 883,000 pounds. So by actually developing a business case to invest in the site and, and, and work off its potential, um, we actually borrowed, Prudential borrowed, 1.7 million pounds worth of borrowing. So Prudential borrowing is where actually we put a business case together. We, 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 the council raises the capital, but actually we agree to pay that back rather than it just coming from general fund. So effectively, it's, it's almost like at zero cost because they, they get that paid back. So it's not a pull on the treasury of the, of the local authority. Um, we also got some funding from a local benefactor, uh, Tropical Worlds, known as the Arnold and Marjorie Ziff Tropical World, because it was established back in the 80s by a, a very uh, kind donation from the Ziff family. And we approached the family and they agreed to give us a few hundred thousand pounds towards this project as well. 
Um, so, so they were really bought into the investment on it. So we looked at how we can theme it all and pull it all together. So we developed some new aquariums and an Aztec theme style. So this is part of the aquarium area there. Um, the, 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 the team that did this, the contractor, did a really good job for us in terms of developing that. Uh, we refurbished one of the houses called the Waterfall House. Um, and where we had lots of like snakes and reptiles and things, the creature corner we call it. So we invested in that as well. We got some crocodiles, because they're always great for kids and fantastic for disciplinaries. Um, so uh, so we, we got ourselves a couple of large crocodiles um, in, and put in one of the ponds. Um, and we also, when we did the business case, we knew we were only capturing about 9% of the people that went to Tropical World. Um, into the cafe and the shop in terms of transactions. So like any good uh, visitor attraction, you actually move, you actually have the shop and the cafe where you come in and out of the attraction. And that's what we developed as part of this. So we, so we expanded the cafe, made it light and airy, in significantly increased the number of covers. Um, we increased the retail offer to make it really attractive, lots of fluffy meerkats and things like that, and snake, rubber snakes. Um, and we've managed, to, we've managed to increase income to 2.3 million pounds. So that's 160% increase on that. So it's more than paid for the prudential borrowing 10 times over. So these are some images of Tropical World that you can see. So you can see from the outside, the cafe space where you go in, you can see the shop where you go in and out. Um, and then just some images of the improvements and the crocodile, of course, there, looking very friendly. Um, and then we've got a site called Loverton Hall. Um, so Loverton Hall is a 57 hectare estate. It sits on the outskirts of Leeds. Probably 50% of the people that use it come from Leeds, but 50% come from North Yorkshire. And as much as we love North Yorkshire, we did feel that it's probably not quite fair that the citizens of Leeds should pay for all that. So, um, so we, we charged a small, um, well, we used to charge for car parking, and we developed and charged a small entry fee for the site, and we got that uh, approved. Um, but it had a, a bird garden that was developed again in the 1980s through the community program. Um, it's very nice. Um, and income was just short of half a million pounds. I mean, it's got a nice deer park and, and what have you. But it had lots of potential. Um, so initially, we borrowed £750,000 to invest in rebranding the bird garden to Loverton Wildlife World. So we know how popular they are, and we do lots of things about conservation as well. So all that was all wrapped up in this. So we developed a, 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 a penguin enclosure, because we know they're really, really popular. So we got, some, we got a collection of Humboldt penguins, and they were added in 2017. And we added value to the estate, effectively. So the visitor experience really went up. The dwell time really went up. So we knew that we could raise entry price to what would be um, a, a, on parity with other similar attractions. So we charge £9 for entry and we charge £4.50 for children. Um, but we offer all sorts of range of discounts. The council's got something called Leeds Card, Leeds Cards Extra, which is means tested and gives up to 40% discount for people that can't really afford to access sites. So it's not just about um, enterprising, it's about inclusive growth as well there. And one of the other things we did is that some of our visitor numbers between November and Christmas were really quite low. Um, so we used to get about 9,000 visitors between that period and we had an income of about £23,000. Um, so it was quite small. So what could we do really without, um, we, to actually increase footfall? Um, so we had the idea of putting on some form of Christmas experience for that, for that sort of six week period uh, where we did Christmas interactive walks, we developed an elf village with, and you know, kids could go visit Santa and, and, and get, a, get a present. Um, and as a result of that, I mean, it just went through the roof. It's amazing, the, the market outlay for Christmas. You know, families are looking for something to do when the weather's a bit miserable and everybody gets excited. So visitor numbers went from 9,000 over this seven-week period as a result of this investment to 65,000 people in that period. Income went up from 23,000 to over 230,000 pounds. And just some examples of that. So the cafe used to take about £12,000 that was in the estate. It took £96,000 over that period. Um, and even the positive benefits, you know, we, we, we offer um, membership, an annual membership, so you don't have to keep paying the gate fee. Um, and just people signing up for membership went from an average 236 over that seven period to 494. So we're actually developing more baseline customers as a result of that investment. 
So the Christmas experience has worked really, really well for us and we continue to develop that. And then going back to the wildlife world, um, we, we, did, we started to invest more funding on that. And, we, and like, like I said about Tropical World, we created a lot, very large shop area so that now you access Wildlife World by going in through the shop and out through the shop. So the shop's done really, really well as a result of that. And you can see this picture is nice, pleasant, light, airy space to be in there. Importantly as well, we added non-bird species to give it the, to, to actually develop the theme of Wildlife World rather than a bird garden. So we developed, we've got tapirs, uh, water pigs uh, and capybaras. Um, so my, my animal IDs are quite good. So, uh, so, uh, so we put some non-bird species in there and we expanded the events program. So we've got things going on, World War II reenactments and things like that. So at the end of that, we've actually increased income at that site by 202%. So an income is now one and a half million pounds a year. Um, so again, that significantly helped with the net cost of the managing the park service. So the Arium. So the Arium, effectively, is our new horticultural plant nursery. Um, so we used to have a, 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 a plant nursery built in 1956. Um, I used to manage it years ago, actually. I was talking to Lawrence from Reekin, who we used to supply plants to. Um, so, we're, yeah, so, we're, so, so we had a very old nursery. We did have a shop, a retail shop there, um, but you had to go through effectively what was a busy works yard um, to get there. Um, wasn't very pleasant, very difficult for people to park. Um, it, obviously, it wasn't geared up from a customer perspective. So the land where the nursery sat was actually worth quite a few million pounds for development. So we managed to um, get agreement to actually invest six million pounds of that to decant the old nursery and build us a new one on some land that the park service actually owned just nearby. Um, so we got planning consent for that. But what we did do, while we still had plant production on our minds, we also thought a little bit about the customer. So we've very much designed it like a modern garden center. So we've got a car park and cycling facilities right up near the entrance. We've got a fantastic outdoor play area uh, for children to use. Um, we developed a, a cafe space as well that we didn't have in the old nursery. We just used to have like a drinks machine. <laughs> and, uh, and we really developed the retail space. But on top of that, you know, we got, we got just short of 20,000 metres squared of glass area as well to, to actually grow our horticultural plants for the city. So these are, some invest, these are some examples. The cafe started to do really, really well, and so did the retail space, and we needed some way of being able to expand that. So just recently, we invested in further 200,000 in a mezzanine floor. So it's a split on two levels now. Um, and we moved into a table service as well. Um, rather than people coming up to a counter because it was getting that busy. So, and it's amazing really, because actually I was really surprised because the mezzanine, when you're up there, look, it's fantastic space. But actually, underneath is just as popular because it's nicely lit, it's quite cosy. And, uh, it, and I'm really surprised how, how well that's done. But on top of that as well, we also saw another initiative. So instead of just growing bedding plants, um, like you traditionally do, or some shrubs that you might have, because of, the, because of uh, all, all the current sort of um, focus on climate change and tree planting, etc., we spotted a real opportunity to grow trees. So we were really lucky that Leeds City Council invested, agreed to invest £600,000 a year in additional woodland creation. So we got some car funding um, to be able to transform some parts of the area to actually grow trees, so upgrade all the benching, etc., to make it more robust to carry the extra weight of the tree production. Um, we also um, developed a, a scheme whereby all the community could collect seeds from our parks. They'd go into special boxes and then they'd be brought up to the area where then we would actually um, grow them on into established trees and then out they'd go back into the community. So we've got a pledge to plant 225,000 trees a year in Leeds. All of those are grown from seed in our area. The skills of the staff are fantastic. They've gone from bedding plant production to tree production. We've not done that since I was an apprentice back in 1983 when we used to grow our own trees. So it's a real credit to the team up at the area to, to be able to do that. But on top of that, um, we have capacity to grow about one million saplings each year. So we started to supply hundreds of thousands of trees to the Environment Agency as part of their flood alleviation schemes in Yorkshire. 
We're also now starting to supply um, some of the local authorities on our, on our doorstep with trees. Um, and one of the most exciting things now, we're part of the White Rose Forest, which is like the Yorkshire element of the Northern Forest. Um, and they've got a, they want to uh, protect their ancient woodland tree stock. So they've asked us, through their, they're going to collect the seeds, um, but they've asked us to grow 2 million trees by 2025 for them. And of course, they're, they're paying for that to privilege. So obviously, we've also got a marketing plan in place to encourage people there, but what is the net position of that? So income in 2022 was 1.3 million. That's a 333% increase. And Golden Acre, this is a, a botanical garden in the outskirts of Leeds. We had a, a local benefactor who um, used the park all the time, wanted to invest in the site. He owned a big conservatory company. So effectively, he says, what can I do? What legacy can I leave? So he actually built us a conservatory onto what was our small cafe. Um, and as a result of that, um, without very little cost from us, uh, income's gone from 320,000 to 646,000. That's a 10.2% increase. So just a note on cafes, because most of us have got cafes in our parks. We manage most of our large ones in-house. Um, and as you can see with this, uh, we earn about just short of 2.8 million pounds. We make a 33% net surplus on operations of our cafes. You need to be about a 300k mark to get that, but that makes a significant investment in our, in our uh, budget. So what have we got going on? So this is Temple Newsom. This is a 400 hectare estate, Jacobean large house, really significant in Leeds. We've got a, an indoor, sorry, we've got a, 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 a home farm, which is a rare breed center um, that, that, that we manage. So it's very much an outdoor attraction. Um, 93% of our visitors used to come during the summer and only a small percentage in winter. Um, so what we've looked at doing is how can we create that to be more of an indoor attraction as well. So we, we were investing 3.7 million pounds to create an indoor play space and cafe. Um, we're also investing half a million pounds in some of the animal enclosures, etc., as well to make it more enjoyable and on educational information. So we're converting this old milking parlor into an indoor play space. We're building a conservatory where the parents can watch the kids play. We're creating, a, again, a shop in the entranceway and, um, and, and, the, and the cafe. Um, so the business case is that this will be ready in spring 2023. It's under construction now. And additional income will be about £600,000 resulting from it. I've got two minutes left. And again, at Temple Newsom, we've got, we used to have two 18 old golf courses. We've taken one of those golf courses and we're developing it into a learn to ride area. So we're gonna utilize part of the old golf club to create a cafe, retail space, and bike hire. We're gonna create seven kilometers of family cycling trails and 40 hectares of new parkland. We're gonna develop a sand children's play area right in front of the cafe on the lovely patio where parents can watch their kids play, can watch them cycle on the learn to ride area as well. And we're gonna put a program of events on to do that. And the, by transforming that space, the projected income is going to go from £127,000 from running two golf courses to £396,000. So a 212% increase. That's our aim for that. And then what have we got planned in the future? Well, we're going to do further work at Tropical World, further work at Lobberton Wildlife World. We're going to develop a regional water play and an RAM adventure play. So this is Tropical World. We're going to convert the top two glass houses into an indoor play space. Very much educational themed, going to have a, a, a ship in there called HMS, with HMS Beagle, which is about Darwin's origin of the species. Um, so it's going to link back to all the conservation work that we do. It's a, it's a £7.8 million investment. Um, but even just on sustaining the existing visitor numbers, but being able to increase fees to make it worth, we're going to pre we, we're predict, predicting another, another £876,000 income from that. And we're going to invest in further in Loverton Wildlife World. We're going to invest 850k in a fantastic adventure play space. And um, the idea is that we get another £121,000 worth of income from that. We're also going to invest further in the wildlife world. So we're going to do a big Maasai themed space uh, with a boobab tree uh, with lemurs and other species in there. Uh, that's a £2.5 million investment. And the increase in income from that will be about £350,000. Further at the area, we've got the small playground as it is, but we really want to go big on it. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to invest another £450,000 in the playground. We're not going to charge for entry. This will be, this will be made off secondary retail spend. Uh, and we're open to increase income by about 55k at the uh, area. And then finally, we've got a regional water play um, where we're going to invest £5 million in the city. Um, can't tell you the location, so it's a bit of a secret. Um, but it's going to have a cafe, a retail space, and we've built in an income in there of about £971,000. Whenever we've done any consultation with kids, they all want water play. We think there's a big market out there and there's nothing in the region that will match this. So, uh, so we think this will be a real success even if they will freeze to death at Appleton. <laughs> so in summary, what have we done? So we've managed to increase income just short of £4 million. We've got a further £870,000 in progress. And future developments, we've got about £2.4 million worth of income. On top of that, about, uh, about inclusive growth, we're going to net off 10% of anything we make, and we're going to create a little fund. And that fund's going to be used to either invest in play in deprived areas in Leeds, or to actually bring the kids up for free, up to these visitor attractions and let them come in that wouldn't normally access it. So we're actually going to make it work for itself as proportion of that. And then what effect has it had on the overall service? Well, back in 2010, only 35% of our parks met the field assessment criteria for Green Flag. And as a result of being able to protect the frontline staffing numbers and invest in our spaces, now 73% of our parks meet the green flag standard. And the aim is to get, by the life of the end of our 10-year strat strategy, to get to 100%. So points that you need to consider, look at the assets that you've got, how you can develop them, try and get some control of those, and be brave, really. Um, and develop the business case. And I think once you do one and you develop success, the finance team are willing to snap your hand off because you're not having to make cuts, it invests in your infrastructure, it creates fantastic visitor places for people, um, but also helps with the budget as well. Okay, thank you very much.